Today we're going to talk about variable cams and their effect on tuning, so stick around. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and this has been a topic that we've sort of touched on in the past today. I want to get a little bit more in depth and that is variable cams and their effect on tuning. Now, it really depends on the platform. So Ford, it's going to have a lot more effect than it will on like Dodge and Chevy, mainly because whenever you have dual overhead cams, you have a lot more ability to adjust the airflow because you can control the intake and exhaust cams individually, whereas Dodge and Chevy, you're still dealing with the pushrod motor, and in fact, when you go in and look underneath variable cams under there, it's going to list it as one, and most of the time, it's going to be ran off the exhaust position. That's something to take in mind whenever you're going through this process. Something else to kind of remember is that, uh, well, I mean, and I'll be honest with you, I'm of the belief that variable cams, while they do serve some purpose and they may help generate a little bit more power, on, especially on the single cam engines like the push rods and stuff like that, they're really there for emissions first and power is a secondary thing. We get into tuning more advanced or, or higher modified motors and stuff like that, you're going to want to lock the cam out. It's going to make your life a lot easier and I want to show you why. We'll, we'll look at... We're going to look at starting off here a Ford Mustang setup and because I want you to pay attention to a couple things that make the Mustang really complicated. Whenever we go in and start doing airflow and stuff like that, we have to take into account all the things that are going to affect airflow. And one of the big things on like the Ford Mustang is this mapped points configurator here. So if we open uh, this thing up here, you're going to see that there's a lot of mapped points. Uh, one through twenty or zero through twenty six, then OP, which is, I believe is uh, stands for optimum power. Keep all that in mind because whenever we look at, let's go underneath, say general here, and actually be under speed density. Look at all of this. I mean, and this is all of those map points create different tables that we have to look at while we're doing the tuning process. So the as you can see. It gets very complicated quick, and the reasoning behind that is is because all of those are attached to a angle. So if we go down here on the bottom and we look at intake valve opening and exhaust valve closing, that's where we're going to find out what those map points relate to. So as you can see, map point two on our, let's see if we can get both of these open side by side. Map point two here has 30 degrees on the intake valve and zero degrees on the exhaust valve. And it blends in between all of these. And so it's not a straight one to one. Even whenever you're over here on your speed density and you're looking at these tables, there are blending points in between these tables. And to really get into it, we have to go up to our speed density calculator for the Ford platform, which has all of our mapped points in here and all of them have their own individual EQ table. So you can see why this is a pain. Now, if we look at a Dodge, use Justin's as found. So looking at Dodge, this is a Challenger. We're gonna have kind of the same thing going on here. If we go underneath variable camshafts, we're gonna have, as you can see, this is a single phaser system on here and exhaust camshaft one is our main phaser on there. Uh, our intakes are both disabled in this case. And so, like I said, on the Dodge and the Chevy, we're using the exhaust cam position as kind of our guide on that. But we still go into, we've got a desired angle table, which as you can see, this is in full cam degrees. Uh, so if you look at our min and max, we're 83 to 130 on there. Uh, so just keep that in mind. But where it comes into play on Dodge and where it makes it complicated is guys like to go in here and they like to enable uh, volumetric efficiency under neural networking. So they'll come under neural networking and they'll disable it here to try and make this an SD tunable platform. That's fine and dandy except this table here that we've opened up that creates this VE table is based on the cam being parked or in the zero position as we call it. So if the cam was locked out, the VE bank one and bank two works perfectly fine. If the cam's not locked out or if it, even if it's limited, 
you've got to do tuning through neural network if you ever expect it to come out right. And then same ordeal as you're going through and logging, you have to log that variable exhaust camshaft position. Essentially, it's going to take into effect all the cam stuff because if you look here underneath training values, we have our cam degrees. Exhaust cam 128.85, intake cam max and min, that's going to be tied to the angle of your cam. So if you do change the cam on this and you change the uh, specs on there and so you put a phase limiter on there, you're going to have to update these settings also to make sure that everything will still populate out through your layers on your neural network. Keep that in mind. And so that's why you'll see a lot of uh, the guys out there that are tuning dodges that are doing this uh, like to go over to a locked out cam or a cam without any phasing. So let's take a look at the GM platform so we can get a kind of an idea of what's going on there and you'll see much the same stuff. So let's go with the Gen 4. So if we're looking at a GM, in this case a 2013 stock Tahoe, you can notice that we have one camshaft in this. Uh, we've got exhaust intake and exhaust camshafts. Pay attention on the Dodge, it uses the exhaust on the Chevy platform, it's usually going to use the intake camshaft. The quick way to find out on that is to come into your desired angle tables and take a look at them. So there's our angles. And you can see this is a flat angle from zero, which would be the parked position of the cam. Whenever we do a cam delete or a uh, VVT delete on this, we just zero this out and we get rid of it. Now, if you are leaving this in there, same ordeal if we, if we go in and we lock this out, we're going to lock this out, say this goes up to 20 degrees. If we lock it out to 12 degrees, we can't go beyond 12 degrees. You, if you don't edit this 20 out, it's not going to do anything. The cam itself will not go to 20 degrees because you have a physical lock on it. So you might get an error on it or something like that. It's not the end of the world, but it's always good to go ahead and update these tables. Here we go. We're going out to 25 degrees on the high table. Uh, but it said, if you do a locked out cam, you can zero those out or just come in here and change this to none on the camshafts. And where that really gets into play on this thing, and it doesn't affect mass airflow because of the way mass airflow is designed to work. We'll talk about that in a different video. But if you go into virtual volumetric efficiency, now you have camshaft angles. And so you have to log this angle so you can make sure and have all the data. So we got up to 20 angles on this. And there was a separate PID that you can log in the scanner in here. And you have to tune all these tables individually. And you have to set these tables up off to filter on angles. And so essentially, it, it, you get into a very advanced tuning situation. And I'll be honest with you, bolt-on mod stuff like that, intake, even intake manifold header stuff like that, a lot of times you can get by with just tuning on the base cam angle here. Uh, especially because once we get done tuning, we're going back into math and in the higher RPMs, we're using math for more of the fueling than we are the VE table. But uh, you start adding forced induction on top of a stock cam or something like that, those angles really make a huge difference and you'll end up fighting uh, a lot of stuff on your virtual volumetric efficiency table where it'll be good and then on next log it won't be good because you... Uh, hit a different area of the cam table. Now, if we advance the exhaust table, you're going to notice this one doesn't do anything. That's because this is a single cam setup. And as I said, we're using the intake in this case. So in summary, like be aware that having variable cams from the factory is going to have to change some things about the way you tune. And it's more needed as you have more modifications as you're shifting the airflow profile as you're making things breathe better now as i said on mass airflow it doesn't matter because it is reading air as it goes into the engine and as you make those adjustments the camo you know makes those adjustments and stuff like that is automatically going to compensate for that because it's just reading the mass of the air that's being sucked into the motor 
Where it really makes a difference is on volumetric efficiency or speed density. What happens there is we're changing the way the motor itself breathes. So normally at this pressure and this RPM, it can breathe this much air. But if the cam has been rotated over into a different position and we're getting more intake opening earlier or something like that, we're getting better exhaust scavenging, that number is going to be bigger than it would be if the cam was at parked location. Hopefully this kind of get, keys you into the idea of why having a locked cam on a higher horsepower or, or more modified build will make your life as a tuner easy. And if you want to go one step further, you can go in and disable VVT on a vehicle that has more, you know, variable timing or variable cams set that table to zero and it's going to act like a locked cam even without having a locked cam in there so that's something that you can do if you're running into this issue and you're just fighting the tuning uh that being said if you're dealing with dual overhead cams just get used to it you're going to have to log a bunch of tables in order to do it properly and adjust those tables individually based on cam position hopefully this will help you guys out i hope you guys you like the new presentation of doing this in the office where i can annotate things on the screen kind of show you what's going on if you have any questions as always hit me up you guys know the drill thanks for stopping by the garage remember abt always be tuning